Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about Dave Rubenstein's thoughts on rate cuts before the election. Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel. And let's get started. So Dave Rubenstein says that there are not likely to be any cuts before the election. He recognizes that the Federal Reserve will be criticized heavily by the incoming president, who, in my opinion, will be Donald Trump at this point, seems to be leading pretty heavily in the polls. And also the Fed tries to stay out of politics. And if they do cut prior to the election, that could be potentially viewed as trying to influence the election a little bit. Pricing for the cut is up to around 78% in the November meeting, around 66% for September. My opinion, you're only going to get one of those, which is what the Fed said in their most recent meeting. So November looks like the most likely chance of a cut this year, which would be after the election. So first cut, highly likely to be November for markets. Moving over to fear and greed, we did get a flat reading here. 40 in the previous close, 40 here today, we could go 41. So still hovering in the same range, really no change on the overall index. Momentum did tick down. We're still seeing extreme fear on strength and breadth, so those haven't changed. Interesting to see put call ratio at extreme greed, even with the slight move down that we got. VIX continues to elevate, kind of looks like a double bottom even on this chart. Headed towards that 50 EMA, which is at 14 right now, and then safe haven demand, extreme fear, that continues to trend lower, and then junk bond demand, no change there for today. Moving over to seasonality, this was supposed to be the low point for the month, and it was a pretty decent pullback. I don't think it was the low point for the month, but again, solid pullback. On election years, the low would be the 26th. These solid lines are your non-election years, so non-election years would have bottomed out already. Election years, we could see two more days of bullishness based on seasonality, and then we'll see a rally into the end of the month. The Friday is supposed to be a pretty bullish reading, so we'll see how that plays out, but we are right on time with what we're seeing in markets. Moving over to the economic calendar, you can see Monday, really not much here for Monday. Looking at tomorrow, you do have consumer confidence at 10 o'clock. That could move markets a little bit. Still expected to be above the 100 level, but well below the previous number of 102. Two-year note auction, that's going to be interesting. Reset that market expecting that to be lower from the previous bid. And then looking at Wednesday, five-year note auction, crude inventories, new home sales. Want to see that new home sales tick up. Previous read was 634,000. 650 is the next read, and that should be good. Building permits also would like to see that go up a little bit. And that'll wrap it up for the Wednesday. Moving over to Max Payne. Max Payne is 542, and that is where we headed right here today already. So we moved right to Max Payne from the previous close. Total options, 2 million. Put call ratio very high now at 4.99 so could have seen the bottom of markets already which does fit with the seasonality thesis could still see a little bit of a dip low and then come back to that 542 area put wall at 535 so that's about a one and a half percent down move small call wall at 540 major call wall at 548 anywhere between 535 548 makes sense really 540 to 535 makes sense in here as well but these puts are kind of spread so 540 to 548 is possible which is basically right where we are at 543 so right in this zone could make sense with your support being that 540 area or about a half a percent lower and then if we get a nice strong push top of the puts is up around that 549 area moving over to the chart starting off with the s p's here on the hourly you can see three big bear candles big down move here today 0.33 momentum continues to roll to bearish on the daily chart this is a big tipping point if this structure starts to break here which is right where we are on that daily chart 21 ema is the next support down at 535 we talked about that on the weekend video that would be the zone that we're looking for some support could find a little bit of a bounce there and then push back to that 540 area which fits with the max pain thesis still plenty of time in the week for a dip low and then a slight relief rally so we'll see how it plays rsi absolutely broken clearly moving lower i think this is probably going to bounce retest the sma and then break down from there so you could see a little bit of a second bounce maybe a lower high setup but this structure is starting to change for sure it's not something we haven't seen before you can see last time we grinded along this trend line dipped low found support and then rallied much much higher so that's also a possibility but i do think that we could be coming up to a bit of a turning point in markets it's been a very long run and you can see it here from top to bottom that's about 11 percent and that is very solid so some kind of a so it wouldn't be shocking to see some kind of a pullback and then looking at that hourly chart you can see the 200 sma sitting there at 540.70 as another major zone of support just above my level of 540.34 moving over to the tasty charts you can see that bearish day here took out that 8 ema at 542.90 
5.95. Midline here is around that 5.36.99 area, 5.37. And then your ATR support is at 5.34.02. So everything right here would give you about another $7 of potential downside into that 535 area. Momentum continues to roll to bearish. No volume on the day, at least on this. And then looking at that four hour chart, still bearish momentum, some volume on that first candle of the day. On that second candle of the day, which was the very bearish move, still bearish on the ATR trailing stop, which is at 549.45. Moving over to the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ has already pulled back to that 200, which is sitting at 473.90. That zone needs to hold massive down volume on that last candle of the day. Could be a little bit of a close there. We've had a big down move, could be a closing trade, could see a little bit of a bounce. Really need that 200 to hold. If that 200 breaks, then we're going to have to start to change a lot of positions. We're going to be in much more bearish conditions so big level there my actual level is 471.93 so 200 sma plus that horizontal support you can see trend lines breaking not looking great and this was much lower on the day 1.3 percent huge down move there momentum continuing to roll to bearish definitely in the defensive mode but like i said 471.93 should be at least a sum should give us at least a little bit of a balance we've had three down days in a row you don't usually see things go straight down forever you usually get a little bit of a pullback so maybe a fourth dip low, wick low, something like that, and then a slight bounce is possible. But based on the technicals, you would expect at least another half a percent lower. Moving over to the tasty charts, you can see those three bearish days in a row. ATR support at 468. We'll see if we get to that level. Took out the 8 EMA by a lot. 21 EMA is also sitting right in that same zone at 468.22. So that could be where we're headed based on the daily chart, which would be another $5 of downside or about another percent and a quarter. We'll see if we can get to there. And then looking at momentum, continuing to roll to bearish. Still no volume. We saw a little bit on the Friday session, but nothing here today. So bearishness on the daily chart. And then looking at that four hour you can see we are already below the last ema atr band there which is at 475.23 below that so we're a little extended in the short term you can still see massive volume on that last candle a little bit of a doji you might see a slight pullback just based on how extended we are we've already gone from top atr to bottom atr still have that 89 ema sitting at 470 but like i said i think a small bounce is possible atr resistance on the four hour chart would be 482.41 moving over to to the Dow and the Russell, these guys had a much better day. Momentum continues to roll to bullish. RSI breaking out on the Russell there. And then the Dow continuing to chug along. This has been looking more bullish. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish. Held the level, pushed higher. Next level is 398.76. Looks like we're headed into a little bit more defense on that Dow Industrial while the NASDAQ is falling. Russell also looking good here, which is interesting. I put out a short about how the small caps have been struggling and they are undervalued historically and relative to their peers. So we'll see how that plays i would have liked to see it hold that 201.88 level but it did give a lot of it back after hitting the 21 ema held the trend line still looks bullish i think this is probably likely to still continue higher tomorrow but we'll see how it plays out everything still looks good there on both of these Moving over to stocks that moved here today, we got Super Micro on the downside, 8.65%, big sell there, gap down and fell, took out my level. Now you're looking for the low of this previous consolidation around 761, took out all the short-term EMAs, momentum bearish, RSI bearish. This does not look great. You have the 144 EMA sitting down there at 708.16, so that's something to consider. But Super Micro looking a lot worse now here today. And then I did bring back Carvana. We talked about it in the weekend video, and it did have a really strong push. 5.76% on the day, opened up around 113, closed around 119.50. My resistance here is the all-time is the highs at 124.15, momentum bullish, RSI bullish. I do think that that's going to go another $5, at least at some point this week. Looking at the MAG7, we have had four bearish days in a row here, continuing to find resistance at that 265.08, wicked it again here today. We didn't touch it on the Friday session, but the three previous days in a row, we touched it and rejected from that level. This seems like a zone of resistance. And then we closed pretty much on the low of this candle, 21 EMA sitting at 254.50. 254.55. We also have some trend support down around 252.78. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish. Looks like the MAG7 looking for a little bit of a pullback there. Moving over to Apple and Microsoft here. We got Apple was looking super bullish on the day. Still closed positive at 0.3. It's up a little bit after hours about 
80 cents or so, which is good, but it did touch my 211.55 level. Couldn't hold that level. Momentum continuing to roll to bearish. RSI still a little bit bearish. This looks like a rejection. Let's see if we can find anything on the lower time frames here. Not much of anything. Looks like the 55 EMA is your current resistance. Touch that level and then reject it after overthrowing it to my major level. And then you can see that big bear candle there. Last candle of the day was bearish. So it doesn't look super great. It's above the 21, but below that 55. 207.14 is your support. And then Microsoft down a half a percent. This looked pretty good going into the Friday session. I thought we might get up to that trend line. And we did make a new wick high. The high of day was at 452.75. And then we rejected from there. Momentum very slowly rolling to bearish. The price target was at 456.85. See if we can still make it there. It's still within this trading range by because it did not close below the low of the previous candle. So we're still in good shape there. But RSI seems to be pulling back. This might touch that SMA at least. And then you would expect at least a little bit of a bounce from there, in my opinion. Moving over to Tesla and NVIDIA. Tesla touched that level again. Ended up down just about a quarter. 188.50 is the level. Want to see it get above that and hold. Looked really strong at the beginning of the session and then gave it all back right in the middle of this trading range. So it doesn't look as good. The weekly chart still looks very good. We're still holding this higher low setup. We're still above all those short term EMAs, just stuck below that 144 in the 200. I do think this looks bullish still, but I would be patient waiting for that clear break of 188.50. And then Nvidia here, big down day for them. 6.68% momentum bearish RSI selling off. I did put out a short about Jensen Wong selling a ton of shares, about $50 million worth, a lot of money there. And he sold around 134 or so. And now you can see big sell off the last three days in a row, down more after hours. This was the biggest stock in the world for a little bit. And if this continues to sell, obviously that's going to affect the major markets and the NASDAQ the most. Moving over to Amazon and Meta. Amazon really had a strong fake out here today. The high of day was 191. And I did take a little nibble in here, closed it pretty quickly as this started to reverse. And that was a good decision. Ended up down 1.6 percent the stop was 188.61 so if you took that trade you should have been out up here which was just a very small loss the hope was that this was going to push to the trend up around 195 and it didn't do it in theory it could push back break that level and then push so still something to watch still a higher low setup potentially but this looks pretty weak now fully engulfed the previous candle and then meta giving an inside candle which is a reversal pattern could hold this trend it's still at it down a little bit after hours like i said the mag 7 looks a little bit bearish so i would be careful on these names. Moving over to staples and discretionaries here, we got staples continuing to hold that level, dipped low, lower than the previous three trading days, back above 77.50, held that level, closed pretty close to the high, which looks pretty good. Momentum rolling back to bullish, RSI still above the SMA. So that still looks like a good shape trade. Still have a low, higher low, potentially higher low here, and then a push could do it. And then discretionary is giving back pretty much all the gains over the last trading day. Almost filled the gap, didn't quite do it, closed on the low, momentum stepping down. We're still above 181.10, so we're still in a bullish trade but I would be watching this to 185.36 but that 9 EMA needs to hold at 180.32. Moving over to transports and technology. Transports continues to uptrend. Had a solid base here. Couldn't hold above 64.89. Want to see it hold that level and push. Still trapped below that 55 EMA at 65.51, but still looks like a better setup over the last couple of days. And then technology continuing to sell. Broke this trend line, gapped right to it and sold more. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish. 21 EMA sitting at 219.32. If that breaks, we're probably headed down to this next trend line around around 210, which would be a substantial move lower for technology. So something to keep in mind, tech does not look good and it is falling even more after hours. Moving over to oil and copper. Oil continues to push, got back above 80.97. Positive here for the start of the Tuesday candle. I think this is going to rally up to that 86 area. Momentum still bullish, RSI still bullish. And then we have copper still holding support here at that 439 area. Momentum finding a little bit of strength, continuing to roll to bullish. So this might be the low setup needs to hold this level we've already tested it with a few wicks the down move on friday was substantial held a doji here for the monday session so this zone needs to hold and then we could look for a little bit of a push from there it seems to be losing momentum on that downward price action and if this does rally that should be a good indicator for the economy moving over to riot and marathon both of these were terrible. Down 3.5% on Riot, gap down in Doji. You could argue it's still holding the level, 878. 
But this is a lower close than we've seen in a while. Last time we were here was all the way on 10 May. And then Marathon gapping below my level, so that was terrible as well, 18.78. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish. This downtrend line continues to hold as resistance. Just had that one really strong head fake there on Thursday. So digital holding company is falling as crypto fell today. Moving over to breadth. Breadth continues to strengthen, which is interesting. S&P is falling on the day while breadth continues to go higher. That is not super common. That's what we're seeing right now. Breadth up to a 66 on the 20, headed towards that 86.50 area, or at least into this 76 zone. 50-day breadth taking a strong push there. Momentum. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish. 62.25 is the next zone there. We'll see how this continues to push, but looks super bullish. It's been four days in a row, at least, of upward movement. Actually, five days in a row of bullish movement. So see how this continues to play over the next day or two. Moving over to the dollar. The dollar fell a lot here today. Again, big surprising move, honestly. With the Thursday and Friday sessions that we saw here on the daily chart, I expected this to pretty much continue to trend higher up to that 106 area. We ended up giving it all back, breaking technically below my 105.50 level. See if it closes below that. We still have 45 minutes till that candle close, but momentum slightly bearish. RSI still looks bullish. Needs to hold that SMA. We're nowhere near it. Could see a little bit of a dip low, hold that level and then push. See how it plays. But I still think the dollar is bullish, which should be bearish for equities. But if this breaks through and heads down towards this trend line around 104.8, that should be bullish for equities over the next day or two. Moving over to yields. Yields did not do much of anything here today. These are probably going to hold steady through at least until consumer confidence. We could see I could see that affecting markets a little bit. If consumer confidence goes down, showing some more economic weakness, that could put some more weakness in yields. The two-year auction is coming up. Hopefully that's in the 4.7 area, maybe even a little bit lower, down around the 4.64 area. That could be interesting. That could give markets a little bit of strength. Falling yields is propping up the Russell. And if that continues to happen, the Russell is probably going to continue to outperform, which should be a good opportunity relative to what we're seeing in the NASDAQ right now. Moving over to bonds, JNK gave back a little bit. Wick to high, the high of day was 94.74. Couldn't quite touch my 94.82 level. I still think that it will. This is still an uptrend. We're above all the EMAs and SMAs. Still looks like it's headed there. And then TLT, positive day there, 0.4, pretty solid. Up more after hours. Big volume on the day too. We've been at lower volume and then big here today, 56.9 million, which I think this is gonna at least head to the trend up around 94.82. And then that next level, here 9650 seems like it's within range i've been bullish on tlt i've been talking about it for a while and i have been buying bonds in my retirement accounts so bonds look like a decent opportunity and i think those are going to head about two dollars higher at least here in the short term moving over to volatility volatility continues to trend higher just slightly 1.41 percent on the close but it got all the way up towards that 13.8 area remember the 50 sma is right in that 14 area expect to get there. 55 EMA is 14.08. And then my level here, 14.7. This continues to trend up slowly. Momentum gaining steam. RSI still bullish. You can also see that 21 EMA on the move index holding support. So move index going a little bit higher. We'll see how that plays. Volatility across markets seems to be headed higher this week so far. Moving over to my accounts, obviously I lost money in my main account, which was a bit of a bummer, down around $800. I didn't lose as much as I should have. I lost a little bit more than I should have. I tried to trade in and out a little bit, which was not do which did not help my case. It was still down $5.46 and I had 200 shares plus some puts, so I did play some defense. This could have been a much bigger day like a $2,000 down day if I was in a full position. So obviously I didn't lose that much, which is good, but still a bit of a bummer at at $800. And then looking at my IRA, obviously that was positive, 84 cents on the IWM there. And then I made 137, so that was good. Made money on the put that I had sold on the Friday session. And then I rolled out my call here to 202 for 79 cents. In a small profit there, I think this is going to go higher after hours. It's already up about 10 cents, and I think it's going to continue into that Tuesday session. So looking to play that to the bull side, giving myself some room between 201.19 and that 202 area. And then I still have the 79 cents there. So still trying to play that to the bull side. And I think the IWM should continue to rally. Q's obviously playing some defense, rolled down and out here to 472 for the put for a dollar and then rolled my call down and out to 477 for 43 cents. And that was helpful as well, making some money back there. And then my calls on the shares, I rolled that down and out to 473. I would have taken off the shares, but I want the dividend, which I believe goes X dividend tomorrow or the next day. So really playing for the dividend dividend, want it to hold up until I can get that dividend and then I can take these shares off, but still playing the calls, at least in the short term, $2 potential there. So max profit on that.
that is going to be 475 and it's up a little bit after hours headed towards that 475 area which would be fine once it goes x dividend let me know down in the comments section what you think of the interest rate cuts when is the fed going to do it Will it happen in September or will that one cut come as late as December? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.